Well, Australia could have a new Reserve Bank governor as soon as today, with speculation growing the government will choose to move on from Philip Lowe. For more, let's bring in Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles and Opposition Leader Peter Dutton. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you this morning. Um, Richard, the ABC morning, right now reporting he will not be reappointed. That'll all happen this morning. Can you confirm that? Uh, look, the government's going to go through its processes uh, around uh, the Reserve Bank Governor's position and you'll just need to wait and see. Is it this morning? Because the ABC knows. How come they know? <laughs> Uh, well, as, as I said, uh, the government's going through its processes uh, around this position. What, their normal PR avenues? <laughs> <laughs> That's a no, yes. Uh, anyway, it's I a bit can't awkward. say any more. <laughs> All right, thank you, you for that. You can ask me again. <laughs> You've confirmed a lot of things I knew. Um, for something that's not political, though, the RBA sure is feeling Labor's big political stick. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not really sure how I'm meant to answer that question either, Carl. Um, I mean, the, I mean the, we're going through our processes in relation to that position, um, but uh, it, 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 the, the Reserve Bank obviously has a fundamentally important role to play and has had, um, and you know, we, we, we want to make sure, which we've done with the Reserve Bank review, that it's operating in the best possible way. Hang on, I'm just going to check on Michael Rowland's show what's going on with the RBA. Uh, just don't mind me. Um, every, um, Peter, uh, you say Big Jim's top candidates uh, are all tainted, but you'll back the decision, huh? <laughs> Uh, morning, Carlos. Uh, well, I'm very happy to say that uh, we will support somebody who is independent, and that's uh, an absolute uh, essential criteria. You can't have somebody who uh, is in the pocket of the Treasurer uh, or the Finance Minister. You can't have somebody who is uh, tainted uh, by an association or a friendship or have worked very closely with the, the Treasurer, the, the Finance Minister and, and the Prime Minister. So it has to be somebody who's independent, and uh, we'll work to support the government uh, if they choose um, somebody of that nature. But, I mean, they've gone out and character assassinated Phil Lowe uh, over the course of the last six or, or 12 months, but he's just done his job in uh, conveying... He's the messenger, and he's just reacting to the government's bad policies. OK, um, he had a, a couple of PR issues along the way, but we'll, we'll sweep that one under the carpet. Richard, it's uh, hard to ignore the fact that if they aren't compromised, they were certainly part of all the decisions that have been made if they're coming internally. Everyone else is paid by the government. That's not exactly a fresh approach. Well, I, I'm not exactly sure where Peter's going with this um, the, 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 this, this narrative. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, the Reserve Bank Governor will be independent and, and needs to be independent. Um, uh, there are lots of people in government who work very closely with the government mm. of the day, and that will occur whoever is the government of the day. So, uh, again, I'm not exactly sure where Peter is okay. going, but it sounds a lot to me like playing politics in respect of this. The simple point here is uh, the best person for the job going forward to uh, look after the RBA is the person who will be chosen to okay. do that. The reality uh, and, is... In, the... And in being the governor of the RBA, they'll be independent. The reality is you're in the thick of it here. You have to be seen to do something about 12 interest rate rises. It's killing families right now. Well, what we're doing in relation to cost of living um, is making a focus of our policies around easing the burden of the cost of living. I mean, this week we've seen more affordable childcare come into place. At the end of last year, we put in place a package which uh, Peter and his party opposed, which put downward pressure on energy bills. We've seen cheaper medicines come into place from the beginning of this year. Literally from the moment we came to government, uh, we've been looking at ways in which we can ease the cost of living. And, you know, Australia is not immune from a, a, an inflationary environment which is experienced around the world, uh, but we're doing everything we can to have an impact on that. Now, the Reserve Bank has a role to play. It is independent. It will continue to be so. We need the best Reserve Bank we right. can have, and we need a person who's independent in that role, and, of course, that's what will happen. Um, but, what, but from the government's point of view, we will focus on putting in place measures which ease the burden of the cost of living. Pete, it's not a political decision, uh, but when you are in government, you made similar decisions. Um, it's not exactly a rarefied atmosphere. Well, Carl, we appointed somebody uh, who's uh, truly independent. And just to go to a couple of the points that Richard makes, I, I want to know who these families are who are paying less for childcare or less mm. for their electricity bill or less for their mortgage. Uh, when the government says that they've introduced these bills that have gone through the parliament and somehow it means that you're paying less for your power bill or uh, less for your gas bill, I, I mean, it's just a complete nonsense. And I think the government 
uh, and the Prime Minister is taking our country in the wrong direction. And at the moment, you're right, families are struggling big time and the government is making decisions which I think are making it harder for families and small businesses. OK, just on power, Labor is uh, winding back its support for coal, dumping positive references from its draft national policy. Despite the sector's $124 billion in export revenue helping the government deliver its very, very big surplus. Uh, Richard, the Labor Premier, meantime, in New South Wales, possibly the second best Labor Premier <laughs> in Australia, is vowing to extend the life of coal-fired power plants. Labor's all over the shop on this issue. Well, we, uh, we understand that coal has an ongoing role to play in our economy um, and in our exports, and there's no question in relation to that. Uh, and we've been very clear about that. And uh, there are coal mining communities uh, around Australia who uh, play a really important role in our economy. Um, at the same time, looking, to, uh, looking forward, we are seeking to reduce our emissions as a, as a nation. And both of those things can live together. And, and we've been putting in place policies which will walk us down that road. And it's really important that we reduce emissions in this country and that we have a clear pathway mm. to zero net emissions. But coal will continue to play a significant part in our economy. All right. And both of those statements are true. Uh, guys, it's been a very, very big week uh, on the international circuit for Anthony. Uh, Albanese, uh, the PM committing a new aircraft and 30 more Bushmasters to the war in Ukraine. Richard, will we ever have boots on the ground in Ukraine? Uh, we're not going to have boots on the ground, but we, we've now got um, two deployments in Europe, one in Britain and one now w which will occur in Germany as part of the E7 wedge tail. So we are very much committed in terms of supporting Ukraine's effort. It's really important that Ukraine prevails in this conflict and is able to resolve it on its own terms. And the announcement of an additional 30 Bushmasters will also be of really significant assistance. Together it means that uh, more than seven hundred million dollars has been committed in equipment in addition to the deployments that we have in place uh, and that stands us really as the just about the largest right. non-NATO contributor to Ukraine given that Sweden has gone into uh, NATO and this is a big commitment right. that we're um, making. Pete I presume you support all of that? Yeah yeah of course we do Carl it's a uh, it's a good announcement by the government uh, we've been calling for it for a while and uh, the Ukrainians are still after some Hawkeyes and other equipment uh, and we need to be uh, an all-weather friend to Ukraine so that they can defeat Russia and allow women and children uh, to get back to their normal lives. Here, here. Finally, uh, it seems someone is celebrating a very big birthday this week. Uh, Richard, from everyone here at the Today Show, we wish you a very, very happy birthday for yesterday. I mean, like Gregory Peck, you get more handsome by the day. There he is. Just yesterday. And like Marilyn oh Monroe, God. a special singing happy birthday for you from Peter Dutton all the way from Bris Vegas. Peter, take it away. No, I've got better. I, Carlos, I've got better than that. I've got a present for what is a that? present here for Richard. Now, what is it's that? A, it, it's, well, it's, well, I it's can't actually, see it. So what is it? You don't want to see it. <laughs> you, you can't see it. Okay, so it's not fake. So again, this is it? not an intervention. But how do you how do you how do you say how do you say to a friend? But as you've got older, maybe you've put on a couple of extra pounds. I understand Richard's thinking about taking up mountain climbing. So I've got him this walking stick, which can double as some sort of a, a tool, like a, a sabre-type tool to take care of elbows, like a Peter... uh, take care of Tanya Plibersek and Bill Shorten, maybe a little bit under the, under the ribs. I'm not sure. But, Richard, this is yours. I'll get it to you today, right? Mind boggles. Good on you guys and happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Appreciate it. Okay, Thank you. Yeah. Peter Dutton is not invited to my birthday. That's the best <laughs> present you can give. Happy birthday, Richard, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?